Are we supposed to dance? Oh. Yeah, if you want to dance, we can dance, because aloha. Welcome to Sunday Assembly Los Angeles. Your <laughs> <laughs> So welcome to Sunday Assembly Los Angeles. Uh, originally, I was going to say that this is your sanctuary away from the Satan's armpit that is currently outside, but now that it is also inside, I would like you all to know that, uh, one, this is the first clothing optional Sunday Assembly, <laughs> and uh, if anyone would like to demonstrate, because that will not be me. And then this, uh, secondly, there is ice water back there and ice coffee, so please help yourself with that. Stay hydrated, stay cool. And um, third, if you got a brochure on your way in, you can use those as fans, or you can fan your neighbor and all feel like princesses. We assure you the air conditioning is on. Unfortunately, this is, it is at capacity, it seems. So we'll just make it through. If we don't think about it, hopefully we'll make, have a wonderful time today. So Sunday Assembly of Los Angeles is a God-free community that celebrates a worldview grounded in reason and evidence. We invite everyone to, to join us as we do our best to live better, Help. often, and, and wonder, wonder more. more. Today we'll hear from geologist Ben Castellana about volcanoes and the wonder of it all. I'm gonna skip that joke. Okay, okay. our program is about an hour. And then, and then we'd love for you to stick around for coffee, cupcakes, and conversation. Hopefully it will be cooler in here by then. And then we, we'll stick around till about 1.30. Um, now, all the way from Sunday Assembly San Diego, please make welcome <laughs> our dear friend, Paul Svensson, joined by our own, woo, yeah! <laughs> uh, joined by our own Wonder More Warblers. Take it away, Paul. Woo! Good morning, LA. Woo! I, I really want to uh, introduce you to possibly one of the finest choral music groups on this stage at this time. <laughs> the the Wonder More Warriors <laughs> are awesome. Uh, oh. I got a little ringy sound. Do I have guitar? So good morning. I, I'm going to let you sit for this song because sweat, right? <laughs> what, what you, will, you will be subject to more singing abuse later, but for right now, we're gonna do it. This is very easy to pick up. you a little part on this. 
which you don't see yet. So we live often, we live better, help often, wonder more, right? That's our motto, yes? This is yes. Okay, so I need you to say these words. Often wonder. Often wonder. Often wonder. Often wonder. Live better, help often wonder more. Try that. Live better, help often wonder more. Good. So welcome to Sunday Assembly. Well, right now I feel like we all feel like sunny side up eggs 
right now. But I promise we're um, working on the air conditioning and we also have some popsicles and ice cream sandwiches. And uh, thank you so much, Paul. That was so uplifting and I liked all of the fan movement that was going on. It kind of looked like dance moves. Like everyone was like really sweatily grooving. I loved it. Um, all right, so here at Sunday Assembly, um, we like to help people. Um, each month we collect items for different organizations. So thank you so much for bringing food for the LA Regional Food Bank today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since 1973, the Los Angeles Regional Food Bank has distributed more than one billion pounds of food, and it's always in need of more. With the help of 30,000 volunteers annually and an agency network of more than 650 partner agencies, we serve more than 300,000 people on a monthly basis. So, very grateful for all of your donations. Um, additionally, a lot of us may have been wrestling with very intense feelings about recent events at the border and children being separated by their families. So we are working with an organization called El Rif Refugio. My, my, say, I have a really bad Spanish accent. El, Rif El Refugio. Uh, anyway, to send letters to kids and parents who are still waiting to be reunited. Um, these are people of all ages, displaced in detainment centers, and we know they would love to hear a friendly or comforting word from you. Um, there is a letter writing station in the back of the room. Um, if you brought a letter with you today, you can drop it there and we'll get it to where it is needed. Um, or you can write a note here in Spanish or in English. It doesn't have to be too complicated. Um, it could be a favorite quote, a drawing, even just a reminder that you're thinking of them can really help uplift someone. Um, also, coming up on July 15th um, at 2 p.m., we will be hosting a letter writing service event with postcards and craft supplies in the boardroom at Control Collective on the west side. So you can sign up for more info on the website or at the community table right over there. Um, so, welcome, welcome back. back. <laughs> Where did I put my mask? All right, all right. As you're signing I, in today, volunteers might have asked you about this. if you had any ups or downs you'd like to share with the rest of the community. So I have one here, Nicole, who has done a great job adulting. She has not crashed her new car and so far has not missed a payment because none have been due. <laughs> <laughs> I got two days. <laughs> um, and Jeff over here is heading to Seattle this week and then straight from Seattle to Boston for a union conference, which is his first back-to-back -back trips without going home in between. So, good <laughs> luck. Enjoy all that packing. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Tammy's birthday was this past Tuesday. She is an undisclosed age. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tammy. <laughs> On July 4th, Donovan turned 14. Woohoo! So, happy birthday, Donovan. Um, oh, and um, this is special. So, the Polendo family, Alicia, Isabel, and Xavier, are visiting for the first time today from Sunday Assembly San Diego, along with their mom, Joanne, who is with us from Nebraska. Thank you for coming. Does anyone <laughs> else have anything they'd like to share? <laughs> Meredith. <laughs> Uh, yes, I would like uh, to announce a very big milestone. Um, my husband James, over there hiding behind the tablet, uh, he just graduated from his nano degree for Android development. So, <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, my, our twins, Sebastian and Brant, turned four on June 30th. We have four. Oh. And Ryan? Uh, on June 28th, it marks my one year anniversary of working for Sunday Assembly LA. I have one more right over here, Michael. 
So, so uh, uh, Amy, Amy stole, stole my, my uh, announcement, but, but what, what she, she didn't, didn't say is, is that Grant and Sebastian, Sebastian have, have been, been uh, only, only alive, alive during, during Sunday, Sunday Assembly. Assembly. So they've so been, been uh, they've had every one of their birthdays at Sunday, Sunday Assembly, Assembly. And, and hopefully, hopefully they, they always, always will. will. That's, That's really awesome. awesome. You all right? And it's been a two-year two anniversary, anniversary to my Katie Sharp, who I met here at Sunday Assembly. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so if you brought children with you, or you are a child and you're not already in the green room with our child care providers, you can meet Christina by the door. Or Amy. Or Amy. You can meet Amy by the door with children, or if you are a children. <laughs> All, all children right. flock to Amy. She if loves like. all of you. You're welcome to stay with us as well. But you also <laughs> have autonomy. It's time to get to know your neighbors. <laughs> if there's a green dot on someone's name tag, that means it's their first assembly. If someone sitting near you has a green dot, maybe say hello, buy them a free cup of coffee after, make it a little easier for them to feel at home. So we got to have an icebreaker. Um, so, since today's topic is lava, uh, turn to a person next to you and describe the hottest moment of your life. And I, I'm talking about the temperature, like the, like the hottest temperature of your life. Oh, I, I can tell you one of those. could be right now. When I flew to Fiji, it was the winter, but it was still like about 90 degrees, and when you step off that plane to that humid air, it's like walking into a wall. That's what hot mm -hmm. feels like. So as everyone says, as, as cliche as it is, at least ours is a dry heat. <laughs> I think one of my hottest moments was yesterday when I walked from my car to my house. So, um, go. So what was your hottest moment? <laughs> so I hope so I everyone, everyone had a hot, hot time, time to share. share. So let's... Move on to the best part of our assembly, our featured speaker. I know y'all love talking about being hot, but we're, we're moving. <laughs> we're actually. We're, moving. we're just going to be physically hot now, <laughs> not verbally hot. So let's. We're actually pretty excited to introduce our guest speaker today, who's a familiar face to Sunday Assembly. He has a PhD in geology and works as a geoscientist for Weston Solutions. When he's not shredding for his band Freak Show or his other band, Disraeli Gears, or our own house band, Ground Control, he travels the world assessing and consulting on the cleanup from disasters, both natural and person-made. So please welcome, for the first time as a Sunday Assembly speaker, Ben Castellano. Thank you and good morning. So, uh, the introduction pretty much uh, covered my first bit of the slide, so, and that, how did that just go away? Backwards. So, now forward? Do I keep going backwards? Yes, I do. It looks like I keep going backwards, which is the story of my life. So, as I said, uh, I'm a geologist. I I'm a consultant, a uh, contractor for the US EPA's Emergency Response Office. And so what I'm talking about here today is not representing the views of the federal government. This is just purely a talk about volcanoes. So let's get that out of the way. So I started my career as an academic. I have a PhD in geology. I studied the volcanology of geochemistry of the series of volcanoes on the Kachaka Peninsula in Russia. And, and towards, towards the, the end, end of that journey, journey I, decided I decided that academics was probably not the best thing, thing in the real world, world for me. I wasn't, I wasn't looking forward to five, five to ten, ten more years of postdocing. So I took the very first environmental consulting job that uh, was offered, and that turned out to be as a contractor for the US EPA's Emergency Response Office. And I'm doing basically the same signs of site characterization work, soil sampling, water sampling, et cetera. It's just that I'm doing this in some of the most profoundly contaminated places this country has to offer. However, some of it turns out to be some really interesting places. I've spent the last 10 years off and on working on uranium mines on the Navajo Nation. 
and we also provide technical assistance to state and local agencies in hazmat, uh, chemical emergencies. We're a full-fledged hazmat team. We do radiological, chemical, biological, weapons of mass destruction training, as well as responses. And uh, this is one of my colleagues here at an abandoned plating shop. Because of the EPA's role in the National Contingency Plan, we also find ourselves providing technical assistance to the response and the recovery of major federal disasters. That includes hurricanes, um, wildfires, oil spills, chemical spills of a national importance, and as it turns out, volcanoes. And so I recently had the opportunity to spend a fair amount of time, actually the project manager for this, for the uh, federal response to the most recent event at the Kilauea volcano. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that further, hopefully. So a little bit about Hawaiian volcanoes. Hawaiian volcanoes are an, a bit of an anomaly. They're hot spots. There's several hot spots around the planet, but they occur within plates rather than at plate boundaries. And we think that has to do with the fact that you have a stationary, within the mantle, a stationary uh, source of magma, and the lithosphere moves over it. And so what you wind up with is a, let me go back. What you wind up with is a stationary magma source and the plate moves over it and you wind up with a series of islands that increase in age as you move away from the hotspot. So, so we think, think this has, has to do with, this, this has its origins in, at the core mantle boundary, boundary when subducted lithosphere sinks to the core mantle boundary, boundary, becomes thermally equilibrated with the surrounding mantle and then this starts pulling a lava lamp and rising up like this plume with a tail. The plume itself is pretty voluminous, and when that intersects the surface, it produces something called a flood basalt, which is erupts hundreds of thousands to millions of cubic kilometers of material in a relatively geologically short period of time, about a million years. The tail portion of it is what produces the hotspot, the island chain afterwards, and that's what Hawaii is. These things have a residence time in the man in, on the planet of at least 100 million years. The Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain, which is this string of islands. Yeah, I can tell I've been drinking a lot of coffee today. So <laughs> maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. Maybe I should just point. So the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain is about 75 million years old. Um, the couple of inflection points represent where the Pacific plate has changed movement over the course of time because of plate tectonics. And it turns out serendipitously that the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain is subducting under my old field area uh, on the Kamchatka Peninsula up there. The, the lavas that erupt are predominantly basalt, various flavors of basalt. And they're dark colored. They tend to be either stony or glassy, depending on what their uh, thermal profile winds up being as it erupts. They have typically olivine phenocrysts, which are the olive green crystals that you see in here, sometimes plagioclase, but it basically looks like this. This is an ah uh -uh flow that's about a week old. They erupt with a very low viscosity for, mag for magmas, and uh, this is still two to three orders of magnitude greater than uh, water, but it still allows these things to flow at a rate of about, this one, the, the USGS women over there have uh, measured this at about 17 miles an hour. Basically, the lava front associated with this was moving at about 1,000 feet per hour uh, at its worst. And the low viscosity gives it a low explosive index. This is fire founding. This is a result of the dissolved gases that are coming out of solution as it, comes, as it starts at daylight. And it fire fountains up. This is about maybe uh, 150, 200 feet of fire fountain. This is a, a relatively low explosive index for volcanoes as opposed to something like this. This is a much higher explosive index. And this was happening up at the summit, but we won't talk too much about that because I don't have time. It erupts at about 1,200 degrees centigrade. 
and it stays liquid, it stays as a lava, flows as a lava down, down to about 850. So it's incandescent throughout its ability to flow. It, it burns pretty much everything in its path, including houses and, and uh, a lot of the vegetation. You notice how dead the vegetation is. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but this is obviously the first volcanic hazard that we can think of, which is the lava itself and basically just get the hell away from it is the uh, answer to uh, try, try to get, get out of its path. path. There's really not much of a way to stop it. it. Some, of the, Some of the other things, things are the ejecta. ejecta. Um, um, these, these are cold, cold things, things, relatively cold, cold things, things that, that fly, fly out, out of the volcano. These are bits of scoria. This is primary magma that's uh, solidified in the air and then comes down. It's relatively lightweight. I've been hit in the hard hat with a few of these things. And uh, sometimes the, you get ejecta blocks that are a bit more dense. The only major injury associated with this response was associated with a volcanic bomb that hit somebody in the leg and shattered it. It's also earthquakes, thousands of earthquakes associated with this event. And some of these, most of these are between one and two. Many of them are greater than three. And some of them have done a substantial amount of damage, including Whenever you have earthquakes, you also have ground motion, and there's been several feet of ground motion along the rift associated with this event. And some of these cracks are 40, 50 feet deep. They're just dangerous in themselves to work on. And sometimes they, oh, they're, they weren't there the day before, and they're there the next day. So it makes, makes the logistics of working here much harder. And the la last couple of items are why I was there. And it has to do with the volcanic gases and the particulates. The volcanic gases, about 3 to 5% of any magma is dissolved gas. And it's mostly water, carbon dioxide, some carbon monoxide, but the sulfur dioxide is the, uh, is the most important concern for us because it's acutely toxic. It can cause significant and long-term damage to your, to your uh, breathing system at about 20 parts per million and it's lethal at about 100 parts per million. And this volcano is, is producing hundreds, if not thousands of tons per day of this material. It also interacts with rainwater. It rains a lot there and um, produces acid rain. This is uh, telling us the pH of the rainwater that was falling on us on, the, on this particular day is 2.5. And it not only causes some skin irritation, it's not something you want to be breathing in. And this is what's killing all the plant life around the eruption site. The plant life dies, it dries out, and then catches fire, and then we have wildfire problems. Lastly is the particulates. If you remember back to the fire fountaining video, you saw bits of chunks of hot magma being shot up into the air. It draws out into these thin filaments that you see here of uh, volcanic glass. These things get entrained into the eruption cloud. They break up, become respirable. They have a high aspect ratio, just like asbestos, and they will wedge themselves into lung tissues and cause very, very significant permanent damage. When the lava reaches the ocean, it causes a whole new set of problems. First of all, when it hits seawater, it explodes and starts shooting up uh, and starts shooting up a steam cloud as well as a particulate cloud. And the steam cloud actually contains mostly water, but it also contains uh, dissociated uh, salt, dissolved salts in seawater, which means it has a very high hydrochloric acid content. And there have been several deaths associated with this in the past, not during this event, though. So what my job was, my team, was to provide, is to essentially identify locations for and construct uh, monitoring stations to augment an existing monitoring setup that the, uh, both the county and, uh, and the USGS have placed around the island. We put 18 stations up. We identified um, basically high, high population areas, uh, data gaps for long-term for, for long uh, uh, contaminant migration, and uh, refugee camps which there are four. And this gives you an idea of how, how aerosols and sulfur dioxide moves around the island. This is what one of the stations looks like. We're setting this one up in a particularly hazardous environment. We were getting pretty constant uh, high hits. We're, as you can see, we're wearing respiratory protection for this. 
and um, because it's an emergency response office, all the equipment that we're using is meant to, meant to be mobile, and so it's all in Pelican cases. So, so once, once we got, we got the 18 stations, stations set, up, set up, we spent, we spent the, rest the rest of our, of our time, time doing nothing, nothing but maintaining, maintaining this piece of equipment. equipment. They, have they have to be calibrated, calibrated. They, they have, have to be prepared. prepared. Most, Most of the time, the time we're spending, spending working, working on telemetry, telemetry because, because things, things are providing, providing real-time data to, uh, to the Civil Defense Office and to the general public. And so that most people on the island knew exactly where their closest station was, they've been online, and they're interested in seeing these data, knowing whether or not they should be evacuating. This is what one of these things looks like. Inside, it's just a hodgepodge of, uh, of analytical equipment and telemetry, and there's lots of places for this stuff to break down. In many places, we didn't have either power or cell phone coverage, and so we wound up having to add, add a satellite uh, system and solar panels and constantly maintaining this with refreshing batteries. So, give you an idea of what the eruptive event looked like. The, um, this, is, this area right here is the Kilauea volcano. It started off as a vent of the Mauna Loa system. It, it began yeah, erupting in this volcanic, volcanic phase in 1983. It's been erupting pretty much constantly for 10,000 years, but this has been consistent lava production from this and Pu'u'o'o, which is, used to look like this. This is now a collapsed hole in the ground. And, and this has the been the steady, steady state, state for the last, last 35, 35 years. years. The, the magma, magma system, system is thought, is thought to look like, like this. This, this, this is, is the Kilauea Caldera, there's the summit caldera, caldera, caldera with Kalei Mau Mau here sitting right here. This is a nested caldera. You've got a magma chamber right here that's presumably receiving fresh magma from the mantle. Um, there's a relatively shallow um, conduit that probably runs along the east rift. So it's more probably 500 to 1,000 feet down. And that's what's feeding Pu'u O'o and all the associated events down radiant. Down radiant. Basically, Basically what, what happens, happens after, after this is, is um, once, once the earthquake started, started, the lava, lava was able to push, push further, further east, east and, and start, start causing, causing some of the problems. But, but backing, backing up a little bit, 2008, 2008 the magma chamber, chamber underneath the started, started, started to grow and a lava lake formed in Hale Mau Mau. And this is the uh, Kilauea caldera right here, the larger Kilauea caldera, and this is the Hale Mau Mau. Caldera right, nested caldera right here. And this is what that lava lake looks like in 2017 on my birthday when I hiked in there and pulled a Frodo. <laughs> There's a Darwin Award with my name on it someday. <laughs> so, so April, April 17th, 17th is when this, this when this, this particular, particular incident, incident began. began. It started, it started with, with a series, series of earthquakes, earthquakes that began, began at Pu'u'u'u, Pu Pu showing, showing that magma, magma was starting, was starting to, to increase the, the reservoir, reservoir underneath Pu'u'u'u. And then the, magma, then the earthquake started moving down the east rift zone. And what that was an indication of is that magma was moving off in that direction. They were starting to become more and more shallow. The USGS made a proclamation that there was going to be an eruption in the lower east rift zone, probably in the neighborhood of Leilani Estates, which, which it did on May 3rd. 3rd. On May, on May 4th, 4th, there was a 6.9 earthquake, earthquake at this location, location. And, this and this entire, entire south, south side going, going from, from, from of the east, east rift, rift along, along here, here slipped by about two feet and opened up a massive gap in the rift. And that's when the magma started pouring, emptying out of the magma reservoir system and into the lower east rift zone. In a few days, we had 25 fissures along a line that were erupting lava, and on May 11th, they declared a federal disaster. And then there was, was, and then, and then the, the uh, summit volcano you know, started, started erupt, having, having some smash eruptions. We'll talk about, about that. I didn't, I didn't take this picture, picture, by the way. Um, on May 20th, we thought we were in a, a steady state, state system, 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 and, and the uh, magma, magma, and then the lava, lava flow hit, hit the coast, coast here. here. But, but then on May 24th, well, this system started to shut down, and most of the magma started to come out of the ground here at these two fissures, 7 and 21. And that changed things a lot. The volume of, of lava coming out of the system was higher. Uh, I happened to be in the neighborhood, and those few days, it was absolutely amazing. There were a lot of houses destroyed. The, the lava system spread out considerably. Um, you could feel the explosions in your chest if you were no more than a quarter mile away. And um, that was probably my running away at that point. 
and the lava flow itself started moving north and east towards some more populous areas, and that's where civil defense started to get, have some real problems, started to get really worried. Nanalehu and Kapoho over here were at risk. The magma, the lava started moving towards the ocean, wrapped around the Kapoho area, and I want to point out this neighborhood right here, it's a fairly densely populated, relatively speaking, and in just a matter of a couple of days, it was gone. So. Up to this date, approximately 700 homes have been destroyed. And tens of thousands of people have been displaced. We have uh, refugee camps that have thousands of people in them. And at the ocean front, we have about a kilometer of, uh, of entryway producing a lace cloud that covers much of the south portion of the island at this point. And so uh, these are just a couple of videos I took from a boat And once again, we, the objective is to stay away from that plume, and I apologize for the, for the stability of this. So I'd like to finish the talk by saying that um, it's e the, the spectacle, spectacle of, the the spectacle spectacle of something, something like this tends to, to, over, tends tends to overshadow, overshadow the fact, the fact that, that this is a real, real human tragedy. tragedy. A, lot a lot of people, people have been displaced. displaced. There's, There's still, still people, people in, 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 in uh, refugee, refugee camps, camps that, that are, are that are, that are being, being taken, taken care of very well, you know, as, as well, well as, as the, the community, community possibly can. can. But this, this is, is why, why we have federal disasters. disasters. This, this is why we pitch in together, together to take, to take care, care of people, people as best we possibly, possibly can. can. Um, um, eventually, this, this system is going to die down. down. As a matter, matter of fact, the last few reports, reports from the USGS have indicated that this system is starting to this system is starting to die down. It will eventually freeze over, and the jungle will start to take over again or uh, developers will start to take over. I guess we have uh, some say in how what happens there. And that's it. Let's hear it one more time for that magnificent talk from Ben. Like, whew, that was a really hot talk. All right. All right. Well, well please, please welcome, welcome back, back Paul, Paul Spencer and, and the Wonder, Wonder War Wonder, Wonder War Warblers. You better love me now or love me not. Time to count what I'm worth. Oh, I just left the night hurt. Oh, where I go, I hope there's some. Oh, not to worry, not to come. And I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to go in the ball. Sing it again now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to go in the ball. You 
You know I don't want to land in New York City. Don't want to land in Mexico. Don't want to land in Houston, Texas. Don't want to land in Chicago. I don't want to land in desert wasteland. Don't want to land with the sharks at sea. Don't want to land in no city land. You take this at my sense. Might just land in City of Angels or West Hollywood or somewhere new. As long as you land at Sunday Assembly. Now I don't know. Come on and sing now. I don't know. I don't know where I'm gonna go in the ball game. Oh, one more time, you got I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know where I'm gonna go in the ball game of those. they are trying their best. Uh, we also try and inject each assembly with some creativity. Um, this time we have combined the trying our best and the creative space. So please make a warm welcome for the gem of a human that is the wonderful KT Sharp. Here you go, my lady. <laughs> Thank you. Today, I want to give you my life in a nutshell. It's a very short nutshell. Um, kind of like a testimony, except instead of being saved by God, I saved myself. I was raised evangelical Christian, because my mother was really into praising Jesus. But when I was 15, she died. And I suffered what is called depersonalization, which is a complete loss of your personality. I knew who I was in terms of facts. I knew my name, where I lived, etc. But I didn't have any opinions about anything. It's the strangest thing. So I knew in order to piece myself back together, it was important to find my opinion. And one of them was my favorite color. I didn't know what that was. I told a friend at the time, as soon as I figured it out, I would call her. So I was about 19, and I was in a mall. And I realized I'd looked at my third red shirt. I was very excited, and I called my friend because it was back in the days of cell phones. And I was like, it's red, it's red, my favorite color is red. So I started to piece the puzzle back together. Uh, I also suffer from PTSD, PTSD clinical, clinical depression, depression, and, and suicidal, suicidal ideation, ideation, which, which makes, makes my, my life, life really, really fun. fun. <laughs> and when and I, I, mean, was I was 17, 17 I, I, uh, got I got expelled, expelled from school for, for drugs. drugs. And, and I, spent I spent the next few years, years wondering, wondering what, what I was going to do with my life until, until I decided, decided to go to college, college and study physics, physics and mathematics, mathematics which, I which I enjoyed at school, school but I wasn't actually that, that good at. And, and after, after the first year, year I saw my grades. I did really well. And I was like, I think maybe I'm smart. It was kind of... It was like a really interesting revelation. I was like, maybe I can do something with my life. And it was during this time that I decided that church wasn't for me, and so I'd stopped going. And then after that year, I switched to engineering, and by the second year of my engineering degree, I'd completely dropped out. I'd failed all my subjects, and it was because I'd become a drug addict. And I pretty much did whatever I could get my hands on, but I particularly liked methamphetamine which almost destroyed my life. I, uh, I lost one job, I got kicked out of two homes, <laughs> and I got kicked out of a band. We actually only had one gig, and my behavior was so inappropriate that uh, the band members sat me down and they were like, we can't work with you, you're insane. There's something wrong with you. I, I did start a fight with the bassist, but I mean, he was an asshole, so I don't, I don't know. know. I was like, I was rock, like and rock and roll, right? And roll, right? <laughs> But, but um, um, I, realized I realized that, that 
I had, I to, had make to make a choice. I had to choose to either get busy living or get busy dying. And so I decided to move back home with my father and I spent the next two years getting my shit together. I cut off all contact with my party friends and I had a few odd jobs. I worked for film and then for radio. And eventually I decided to go back to university. So by this stage I was 26 and I was in my second year at college. My first semester back I got awful marks. I passed, but I, I, was, I was really heartbroken with my marks. But I kept trying and I studied and I, my marks got better and better. And at the time I had a part-time job as, um, at a sex toy store, which is definitely the coolest uh, student job that I've ever heard of. <laughs> and eventually the university asked me to work for them. So I started off marking and then eventually tutoring and then I went to lecturing. I got a summer scholarship at the end of my third year and my fourth year. And then I got a master scholarship in mathematics. And so everything was going amazingly well. And one day, and I was conti I'm continually surprised. So one day my master's supervisor calls me into his office and offers me a PhD scholarship. And I remember the day, because I walked out of the office and I was walking down the hallway and I was floating. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that, but it was like, I was like an angel, like just walking down the hallway. Um, and it was, it was such an amazing, <laughs> moment in my life. I'd gone from being a crack addict <laughs> to being to having a PhD in about 10 years. And I couldn't I have done, done it without, it without help, help from my family, my family particularly, particularly my sister, my sister Sarah, Sarah, who's an incredible, incredible person, person and, and is also a Christian. Christian. My whole, my whole family's religious. religious. But, but we don't, we don't let, let that get in the way, way of, of how we feel, we feel about, about each other. other. And, I think, and that I think that that's a really important lesson that we need to remember in today, today's age, and our political climate, and especially with a lot of you being non-religious, but coming from religious families. So I'd like to conclude with singing you a song that I wrote for myself, but, but also, also for everybody, everybody else, else who experiences, experiences dark, dark days. days. And it's, and it's really, really about those, those times, times when you feel like, like it's never, never going to get better. any better. And, and I, I, just I just wanted, wanted to, say to say that, that you know, you know today, today may be shit. You may be you may feeling, feeling awful, awful, but, but tomorrow, tomorrow who, knows? who knows? Could be, could better. be better. So I hope, so you, hope enjoy you enjoy it. it.
Sometimes I'm fine. I don't need to lie. The days I wake up with a smile. I'm so integrated and, and not, not so, so complicated. complicated. I kiss, I kiss the, the girls that have faded. But today I'm not okay. But tomorrow is another day. One day. Wow. Thank you so much, Katie. Not, not, not today, but one day we'll be okay. okay. Our, our moment, moment of reflection today is inspired by a documentary that our Sunday Assembly Unofficial Movie Club recently went to see, Won't You Be My Neighbor? In 2002, Fred Rogers, that most of you probably know as Mr. Rogers, gave the commencement speech at his Dar Dartmouth College. So please pretend that this is your college graduation and I'm the kindest man to ever live. I'd like to give you all an invisible gift, a gift of a silent minute to think about those who have helped come who you are today. Some of them may be here right now, some may be far away or no longer with us. But wherever, wherever they, are, they are, if they've, if they've loved, loved you and encouraged, and encouraged you, you and wanted, and wanted what, was what was best in life, life for, you, for you, they're right inside yourself. And I feel that you deserve quiet time on this special occasion to devote some thought to them. So let's just take a minute in honor of those who have cared about us all along the way. One silent minute. Whomever you've been thinking, thinking about, about imagine, imagine how grateful, grateful they, must they must be that during, that during your silent, silent times you remember how important, how important they are, they are to, you. to you. It's not, it's the, not honors the honors and the prizes, prizes and the fancy, fancy outsides of life which ultimately nourish our souls. souls. It's the it's knowing, the knowing that, we that we can be trusted, trusted that, we that we never have, have to fear, fear the truth, the truth. The, the, that the bedrock, the bedrock of our lives from which we make our choices is very good stuff. Thank you, Fred. And now, while you're feeling all warm and fuzzy, give us some money! <laughs> um, but seriously, uh, we are donation-based and we rely on your generosity and contributions to keep this community running and alive. Um, so if you enjoy Sunday Assembly, <clears throat> 
Um, this is how you can help keep us going. Volunteers are circulating with boxes, or if you'd rather give a quick credit card donation, raise your hand so a volunteer with a square reader can come to you. I have my own square reader here, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of myself. Let's see, how about $50? There we go. <laughs> Your donations help us with copy, insurance, venues, websites, all that stuff to help keep our community going. And don't forget that you can make it even easier to give by becoming a monthly donor, uh, monthly donor, um, which makes you a member, an official member of Sunday Assembly LA, complete with a uh, Passionable green name tag that I finally acquired. And <laughs> very, oh, sorry, very proud of. Um, <laughs> but most important, regardless of what or how you are able to give, thank you so much for your support. Um, it is literally what keeps us going for everyone. Even just your attendance means so, so much to us. Um, before we start on the last song, it's time for announcements. Uh, next month's Sunday Assembly, we'll be talking dark matter and black holes with JPL, astrophysicist Eric Huff, and music from our own house band, Ground Control. I'm told there will also be food trucks. We always have something going on. Game nights, movie nights, discussion groups, peer support, book club, family dinner, Sunday social, volunteer opportunities. And on a July 21st, there is a special laser-related event um, where you can make cyber name badges um, at, at Maker Tools 101. You can totally nerd out. There's lasers and servos. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, and things that cut things. And you can make a custom Sunday, Sunday Assembly name, name badge um, at this event. And, and um, I don't think any of us... Ch so check with Todd at the community table yeah. to see his name badge and to see our full list of events and to sign up for some or all of them. We'd love to have you come out for more because we're more than just the one Sunday a month. Um, there are way too many events to mention, so if you didn't catch all that, you can always find everything on our website at sundayassemblyla.org. Yeah, right there. Um, and check out, again, the community table and Todd's awesome lasery. Um, and Russell. Yes, 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 yes. yes. A few people have the awesome laser. After the song, be one of those people. After the song, you're welcome to hang around. I know this was your part. And talk with us for coffee and snacks. Then at 1:30, we're going to head to lunch at Mendocino Farms. It's over by the Target at Santa Monica and La Brea. On the other days, I'd say you could walk there, but it might not be what you want to do today. There is, I think, an hour of parking free in the Target structure. And then but there's also street parking on a. Of where the lot is and for Formosa? 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 The, the yes, yes. By Formosa, Formosa Cafe. Cafe. Yes, yes. You can, you park, can park free, free over, there. over there. Um, I, also I also would like to let, to let you know, know that, that um, especially if you're a first comer, uh, normally we have more AC than this, so please don't let this deter you from coming again. Um, we also have recently acquired a new um, west side location that we will be starting in uh, September. So now we will have Sunday assembly twice a week, um, once at this location. No? Oh. Twice a month. Twice a month. <laughs> Wishful thing. We have things at least more or less once a week, but not at that <laughs> Maybe Amy will explain this. I'll just clarify really quickly um, so we can cut down on the emails. Uh, we are uh, shopping for another venue, and we, we are likely to be in another venue very near here in September. Uh, we will update everyone as soon as we have details about that. And we had started a West Side Assembly, which was going very well, uh, up to two assemblies a month. And uh, they had doubled our rent and things but they've come back to us now so we are in talks with them and it, it looks promising but that's not an announcement yet that's too big but hopefully we'll have another a second west side assembly soon yes wait it's, it's not twice a week <laughs> I, I would love it uh if you would like if you'd like to run the twice weekly assembly i will sponsor one a month and give you all of my notes uh, and you can have access to the google drive i don't have ac in my house so <laughs> 
Every, every, every time. Time. She, she there are game nights, game nights and they're, and they're fun. fun. I, I recommend, recommend it, like, like total, total nerd, nerd games come out for that. that. Check, 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 check out, out the, 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 the community table. table. So are we ready um, to go back and follow Wonder Woman World War? Yes, so now, yes, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, you said, said it. You said it. And so they're playing our final song, which PTW is one of my faves. Thank you, Paul, and the Wonder Woman Now we're going to stand up. Now we're going to stand up. Please stand up. Even if you don't want to, why not? I need some percussion out there. Here's the beat. When I wake up, well, I know I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the one who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the one who goes along with you. If I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who gets drunk next to you. If I haver, look it up. Yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who's havering to you. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the one who walks a thousand miles to fall down. Think of the Lone Ranger. Right? Got it? One more time. When I'm lonely, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who's lonely without you. When I'm dreaming, well, I know I'm gonna dream, I'm gonna dream about the time when I'm with you. When I go out, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who goes along with you. And when I come, when I come home, Here we go, clap it. So much, Paul, and the Wonder War Warbler. Yeah. And, and before, before you do the rest of your thank yous, thank yous uh, I, just uh, I just want, want to reiterate, reiterate that, that um, at the back, back of the room, room there is a table, table for 
letter, letter writing, writing for, for dis displaced children and families um, to be donated to them. So, and snacks, and snacks. Um, depending on who you are, one may be more important than the other. I also hear popsicles and ice cream. Um, yes. Can so, I hear a cheer for popsicles so and ice cream? <laughs> Write your kind-hearted letters with an ice pop. So a special thanks to Ben, Katie, Paul, the Warblers, Noah, and all of our volunteers, and to all of you for coming. Woo! So until next time, <laughs> live better, better, help often, and wonder, wonder more. more. Thank you and all. And we usually have AC. <laughs>